for the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Three is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Four is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, both practical and occult science. Five is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Dennis, no Eight. sound. I'm sorry? They're not getting sound. Eight is to earnestly oh, contend it. for the common salvation it, and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Nine is they to make it. known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And ten is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of a mortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. Tonight we'll have a prayer. And salvation is actually in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. In his precious name, let us say, Do they have just sound? Uh, I'll ask. Is the camera working for them? It can't be. It's going to be in the just sound. Oh. Should I have a, should grab your phone and um, put it away some of my glass stuff? Because I think you had to jump on and share your light. Do, do the kids jump on? It doesn't talk, so it would be. He's hearing us now. Dennis? What? He, they, he can hear us. Yeah, they have sound, but they don't have picture, right? Yeah. Yeah, the, the I can't get the frame rate to adjust down. And that's the problem. It's trying to, it's trying to send the picture out at a too high of a frame rate. Well, why don't we just do sound? <laughs> yeah, okay, well, why don't you go ahead? I'll just work on it as long as they have sound. Uh, why don't we go ahead? The scripture reading will be Luke. Let's go with Luke, the 13th chapter. For those of you who are listening, 
our picture is frozen, but evidently you're still getting the sound. So we're going to just carry on rather than, than not have any time to pass. Our scripture lesson this evening will be Luke, the 13th chapter, which I'll be reading from the Holy Bible. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood mingled with their sacrifices. And Yeshua answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they suffered such things. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or those eighteen upon whom the tower of Siloam fell, and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. He spake unto this parable, he spake also of this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he to the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Sire, let it alone this year until I also till I dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit well, if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no way wise lift up herself. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified Yahweh. And the ruler of the synagogue and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work, in them therefore come and be healed. And he said, Thou hypocrite! Doth not each one of you on the Sabbath day lose his ox? Whom the adversary hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for the And whereunto shall I resemble it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and cast into his garden. And he said, and again he said, Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of Yahweh? It is like the whole was, un was leavened. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying. And he said unto them, Strive ye to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in, and shall not. Shut the door, and ye begin to stand without, and knock at the door, saying, Master, Master, open unto us. And drunk in thine presence and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not when ye are. Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of Yahweh, and you yourselves thrust out. And shall sit down in the kingdom of Yahweh. And behold, there are left Pharisees saying unto him, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said, Today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be done. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow, and my father. Thank you. 
outside of Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killeth the prophets, and stonest them that are set on not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, and verily I say unto you, ye shall not see in the name of Yahweh. Okay. Our first speaker, I'd like to call him Vicki Canoe, please. Dr. Canoe. sure I can work with this scripture. I guess what I've had on my mind is uh, Jerry was talking the other day and that we learn by all of these things um, waste any time because we're so far behind already. Um, what I was thinking about in Egypt, how it talks about how all these things are for our learning and for our examples onto us. When the children of Israel are in the wilderness of Sinai here, they go suffer all the plagues, and they're forced to go through here through the Red Sea. And whether they they um, they had trust in Yahshua. their fights for them. He fed them, he clothed them, he did it. This was given unto them so that they could put a sacrifice here on this altar and as and this sacrifice would die in their stead. So they would be saved physically so. Uh, lose its life to, so they could be saved. Uh, Joshua gives them all the animals in the wilderness, everything was there for them. For them. They didn't have to. Um, And the animals died for them so that they could be saved. So what this is showing us, 
everything that they go through here, everything the apostles and the prophets, what they all went through. We have to suffer too. I mean, we don't have to suffer and be stoned. Uh, we don't have to be shipwrecked. to go through but we do have to go through our trials but if we have our trust in yeah he's going to pull us through the trials and each time he It strengthens your trust in Yahshua. It gives you more trust, more understanding. And as you do that, you don't have to worry. Um, we we're just put just put through a you know not a terrible trial, but a little trial, and it was very very stressful. It wasn't bad, but it was very very stressful. And I knew that even. And um, so we got this news, and um, I thought, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> so I knew that, I knew in my forth, and everything, you know, appears to be that it's going to, it's going to fall into place and going to be a better situation. It's going to work out just fine for us. So, you know, you got to put your trust in Yahshua. And uh, I can't help but think about where he talks about the times and the seasons. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of It says, Take heed that no man deceive you. Go ahead. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and shall deceive many. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine. Are the beginning of sorrows. And these are just the beginning of sorrows, and we're seeing all that now. I mean, it's been going on all along. Look at it. You can't not see, watch the news and wonder what's going on, what's Yahshua going on with this situation. You know, it's coming to a head really quick. Shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. You know that's pretty interesting too. Shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, because the teaching in that name. Okay, keep going. Ten, and then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one. The love of many sh shall wax cold. 
Yeah, iniquity, you know, that's another thing. Looking at the news, the things that are going on and the amount of crimes that are being committed. things that young people are doing to each other and killing people and it's just we never ever heard of that mm -hmm. many things happening when when we were no. younger okay keep going 13 but he that shall Dennis always talks about how this is a race, and it's not a sprint. It's, it's an endurance race, and we have to hang on all the way to the end. It's like you can't get so far and give up and say, oh, I just can't take anymore. You know, that's the time when you've got to dig your heels in and pray to Yahshua that he carry you, because there are times when we're not able to, to do anything for ourselves, mm -hmm. and that's where we... As we go through all these trials, we learn that we put our trust in Yahshua, and he's going to pull, it, pull us through it. Because we can't do it all. We have to ask Yahshua for the help. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. And then shall the end come. Iniquity is going to be abound. The love of many shall wax cold, you know, and I think of that, the love of many, because, you know, it used to be not that many years ago that you could go anywhere, and the love that we thought we felt in this gospel, gospel that people felt and shared with us, the love of Yahshua, we thought that it was sincere. And apparently it's not, because so many have wax cold, and, and they're not even using Yahshua's name. I mean, Yahshua, our Savior, his name means salvation, and people are forgetting that name, and they're not using it. I, I mean, I don't understand how much worse you can be for your, your love waxing cold. I mean, that's about as bad as it can get. Um, and then that he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So... Um, I don't know how to put this. Um, my, the thoughts are in my head, but it doesn't always come out really well. Um, I know that Yahshua, I know that Yahshua allowed himself to be put on this cross and die for us so that he could save us from our sins. I know that without a doubt. I know that um, he is salvation. He promised us. Uh, what is that scripture where he says, um, I will keep all that he has given me. Where he talks about... Um, John 17. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Why don't you start right at 1. Okay. John 17, 1. These words spake Yahshua, and lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. Now this is when Yahshua was going to be put upon the cross. And he's talking to Yahweh Elohim. And he's saying, he's, he's lifted up his eyes to his father and said, Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Go ahead. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given me. He's going to give eternal life to as many as Yahweh has given to Yahshua. So he's already, you know, and we have talked many times, we've heard the, 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 uh, lectures about predestination, how Yahweh gave so many to Yahshua mm -hmm. that they were going to be saved. 
and those were not going to be lost. Okay. Three, and this is life eternal. And this is what it is. That they might know thee, the only true Elohim, and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Oh, wait a minute. Um, I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do, mm -hmm. which uh, the work he gave him to do was to fulfill everything that was written about him before he got here. Right. So he... He finished the work, and then the accumulation of that work was that, um, you know, read now, read, read five. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had, <clears throat> excuse me, which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. So he, he manifested his name to the sons which Yahweh had given him, and uh, they have kept his word. Now keep going. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. And, and they received them. And they have received them. Okay. And have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Now that is such a beautiful thing, how that Yahweh gave Yahshua the names of the people that are going to be saved. He's manifested them, manifested his name onto them, and where does it say that again? Uh, uh, six. Go ahead. Read that again, please. Six. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. And they have kept thy word. Um, you know, and he's saying here, I, don't, I pray for them. I pray for not for the world, but for them only which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And... You know, as much as we'd like for everyone to have their soul be saved, it's predestinated. Yahshua has only a certain amount of souls that he can take back to the Father with him. And that's just the way it's going to be. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Um, anyway, um, I just pray to Yahshua that he keeps my mind where it's supposed to be, keeps my mind in, in, uh, Remembering him and remember his purpose. That this is his purpose. This isn't what this isn't what we want. This this life isn't for us to go around and have fun, make a lot of money and and you know, have a lot of kids, do whatever. The purpose is to know Yahweh, to know Yahshua the Messiah, and to know what his purpose is. And that is that Yahshua is salvation. That is his purpose. So, as long as we keep coming here, keep Yahshua on our mind, and ask him to keep us, 
I'm having a hard time getting the words out tonight. Um, ask him to keep him in the forefront, forefront of our mind so that we can walk in a way that is pleasing to him. And not however we want to do. Just do what's pleasing unto Yahshua and um, glorify his name. Glorify Yahshua's name. Because that's the only thing that's important right now. The only thing at all. He put us here to learn of him and to glorify him. And I, I just want to do whatever Yah, whatever it is that Yahshua um, wants me to do. And um, all praise and honor go to Yahshua. And our next speaker this evening will be Dr. Andrew Holby. Good evening, ladies and gents. I have been also thinking about the lecture we had on trials um, last week because I see so many different things going on in everybody's lives, you know, and many, many different manifestations of how people are being tried. And I know that when you're going through your trials, Satan likes to tell you, Basically, you're going through this because you're lost, you know, mm -hmm. or at least that's, you know, what I'm, I'm always like, well, why am I going through this? I must not be any good. But then I pray a lot and I talk to Yahshua and I've learned how to listen to the small, still voice that I know is not my own because it's wise. Mm -hmm. And it's, and he tells me and he says, this is for your benefit, just like it says in the Bible. You know, and we talk all the time about how um, it says in the Bible that he, um, I can't remember exactly who said it, but he was thankful for his trials. I think it was Paul. And it's a really hard statement to be. Count it all joy. Yes, count it all joy when you're going through diverse temptations. That's really not an easy thing to do, even when we know that it's in there, and when you're going through it, you're not thinking, oh, cool. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Oh, cool. Yash was working with me. But we all go through trials, and it is all for our benefit. And the benefit that we are getting out of that is that it's making our faith that much stronger. That's right. And we can't, without faith, we can't really love and serve Yahweh or Yahshua. It was, um, we read somewhere, and I don't remember where the heck it was. It wasn't a scripture I don't think we get very often, but it was something about faith pleases me or something. 11, uh, Hebrews 11, 5, I think it is, or 6. Yes, it is. Yes, six. Hebrews 11 and 6, please. Thank you. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And you know, no, I don't know. That's about the nuance. I'm not going to say that. Look at the Yahweh versus faith. Okay. One of the things about the trials, if you think about it, when you're going through it, you do have to diligently seek Yahshua. Because you get to a point where... There, it feels like nothing can help you. You can't, you can't fix the problem. You know, it's not remedying itself, and you feel totally like helpless and out of control. And then you're like, "Yeah, sure, please." You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So how could you be more diligent than when you really need him like that? You know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of cool that um, there are all these witnesses for us to go back and glean when we're going through rough times because things are rough for everybody everywhere and it doesn't show any sign of stop. It seems like it's getting faster and more violent, if I could say it like that, or more um, magnitude, I guess would be a better word. So 
I'm just really thankful that Yahshua, you know, revealed these things onto us, and he keeps us coming here to learn about him because it's so important. I can't even ex uh, explain or express how important it is to be here. And the other thing that I've been thinking a lot about, because we've been talking a lot about it, is how um, people are forgetting the name of Yahshua and not paying the respect to the name that it's your salvation and choosing another name. And first of all, I don't, I can't understand how anybody would think a man's name would be higher than Yahshua's name, first of all. But second of all, if Yahshua didn't give Dr. Kinley the vision, Dr. Kinley wouldn't have known anything either. So how do people miss that? You know what I mean? I, we're not meant to understand why they think that way, obviously, but I really, it's like like a vapor. And just time and time and time again, there's so many witnesses in this creation that Yahshua is the true name. Yahshua is salvation. Not only is it down through your Bible from beginning to end, you have witnesses in your body. that you have, Not that he's salvation, but that he created you. Mm -hmm. Now... Correct me if I'm wrong, but if Dr. Kinley was your savior, there should be a Kinley witness somewhere in your body. Your heart should be pumping Kinley, 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 or your breathing, or the waves and the creation of birds, something. We have a plethora of witnesses in the creation that the name is Yahweh and that his son is Yahshua. We'll never run out. No. We probably not even scratch the surface of everything that's there. And Dr. Kinley was our guide to bring us to this, which I'm thankful to Yahshua that Dr. Kinley had the vision. And I have nothing against Dr. Kinley. I'm not trying to say that he's a bad person or anything like that. All I'm saying is that I worry for people that don't want to bow to Yahshua and give him the respect that he deserves. And basically they're blaspheming his name by taking the salvation from him. And we talked about when Yahshua was crucified, the audience was getting all riled up and they were yelling, you know, if he's the king, let him save himself. And here we are all these years later, and what are they saying? He's the king saving himself. I don't want a king like that. I'm sorry. I don't want to follow a king that's going to just save himself and doesn't care about us. And once again, there's witness after witness in the Bible that that's not the truth. Yahshua is the shepherd. A shepherd is not a, he's not a loner. He has a flock. I don't mean loner as in people. I mean he's, he's not by himself all the time because he has a flock. We happen to be that flock. And I'm happy to be a, a sheep, you know. And it says in the Bible, um, if somebody wants to get it, you can. It says that he will... Leave the flock and go to get the one sheep that went astray. And that one that went astray is not him. <laughs> Sir Matthew. Wait for a minute. Eighteen twelve. Yep. That's it. So twelve and thirteen is actually twelve and fourteen. Matthew eighteen twelve. How think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray? Doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. And why would he put that in the Bible if he was only saving himself? Yeah. That's very, very clear. It does. Nobody has to help you understand that verse. You know what I mean? 
And I, you know, it's cool is when I was reading this just now, it reminded me because anybody that knows me and my dad knows we have two dogs. And last year when I got back from banner camp, I had to pick, my Aunt Linda was watching my dogs for me, and I had to pick my two dogs up and take them home. And I have this split collar that's like a Y for when you're walking two dogs at once, but it's not so good on my dogs because they're not puppies and they weren't trained to walk real good together. So I let my girl dog off the leash and she went flying into the street. My heart was in my throat and I was like, oh my gosh. So I took my dog that happens to be obedient and would probably never run away for anything put him in the house, and went after my lost, my sheepdog, basically. Yeah. I had her run up this hill. I was so upset. Every time I got close to her, she turned around and took off. I was like, I'm freaking out. All I'm thinking is I'm going to have to call my dad in New York and let him know that Sophie got out or so, or she got hit by a car or something. And I was like, gosh, well, please. So finally, finally she comes back. And I'll tell you what, I rejoice more of that dog coming back than I did of Henry being a good boy in the house the whole time. And I think that's cool because that's like a witness, you know what I mean? We probably all have our own way to relate to that, but I thought I'd share that with you guys because it's kind of a different way to think about it, you know? And I know for a fact Yashua loves you guys. I know for a fact. I have no doubt in my mind he loves you, you're his children, and he's going to save you. And throughout my life, throughout being in class, learning from my brethren, you know, everything I've learned, I have no reason to believe otherwise. Because every time I might think, hey, maybe this isn't the truth, I get some kind of a witness in my life mm -hmm. that shows me, no, Yahshua is the truth, and Yahshua is real. And I'd like to be um, encouraging to my brethren, because I think that in these times it's very important for us to have somebody to encourage each other, you know what I mean? Because we are living in, uh, like Vicki was saying, everything in the world is extremely negative. You look at the news, it's all like somebody got killed here and there's a fire here and disease here and, you know, mm -hmm. danger here, danger there. Um, things that are going on with our own personal trials and tribulations are not, you know, fun things to go through. They're depressing, they're sorrowful, um, stressful, and we need each other. And that's why he gave us, that's why he made us a flock, you know, mm -hmm. so that we could have each other. And think about it, when we're done with, when, when the cremation comes, <laughs> we're all going to be part of the same body. It's not like, you know, we're all going to be separate and everything like that. We're all going to be together. And we need each other because as the, as the war, if I can say it that way, the war against Satan gets harder, you need your battle buddies. It's, I notice that all the time with the Marines. Those guys have camaraderie. Like it's, I can't even explain it if you haven't seen it. And I think about how that is this, the physical representation of us. You know what I mean? Yeah. So a shot in the arm, morale, you know. I hate to use this because it's cliched, but keep it real. Preach the truth. That's, that's all we need to really do. Mm -hmm. Times are going to get tough towards the end. We're here for each other. We have each other's backs, and we will make it. And with that, that's all i got to say. In our next speaker this evening, we have Belinda Bolton. Thank you. Thank you. I've enjoyed the testimonies and the and the teaching of the prior speakers. It's a beauty and a gift to have it to be able to come down here. And even though our class is small right now, it's it's got power. We're all sons of Yahweh and we all have something to say and and things that we've been working with in our minds and he's all you know, that's it's a living gospel. It's like Andrea was saying that 
constantly, you know, he's proven to us that he's real and that he's, he's in our corner and that even though we have to go through the trials and tribulations that we all talk about, it's going to be okay. And we've, we've been through enough that I know we still, you, we talked about this before. You really, at the time you're going through it, you really can't, you cannot really wholeheartedly count it all joy when you fall into these diverse trials and tribulations. But you, but that, but your faith and your strength, knowing that he's working a work, will get you through it. And once you get through it, then you look back and you see the wisdom and you see that he had your back and that, like Vicky was saying, that the situation appears to be better. She doesn't know yet because it hasn't exactly played out, but everything points to the fact that it's better than what than what they were in already. And so. Basically, that's what all of it's for, because we all are going to be better once we come through the other side of whatever we're going through. And it's, it's for the, tri, the trying of our souls and, and faith, you know, and, and the working of faith through us. And, and uh, basically, it's to glorify Yahshua. And, to, and that's the whole thing, you know. It's like if we're talking about the purpose, and the purpose is... Bottom line, yes, we do have to know the purpose. Where is it? Where was that salvation? The top. Oh, yeah. Yash, the, the name Yahshua is, yeah, you know, Yahweh is salvation. This is, this is the purpose, that he came in to save us from our sins and to bring us back to the Father in him as one. He's clothing us with He's clothing us with the garments of his beauty and glory, which are the attributes, which are, um, I'm like, well, we're going to look at this. <laughs> he's clothing us in this. And he's, he's clothing us in, in his righteousness and presenting us back to the Father. And without him doing that, we have no hope because we talk all the time about, you know, Dr. Kinley said we were um, dead on arrival when we came in. And then if you read in Romans, to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But as we talk about all the time, this, this, the truth in this gospel is by revelation only. So to be spiritually minded is by revelation only. So it's a, it's a gift that we receive, and it's a work, it's a work of Yahshua, not a work of, of our own. That's right. And so those, the speakers before me, it's like we've all been through so much in this life, and, and it is, it's a joy and, and a pleasure to have each other, you know, and, and fight the fight and hold each other's arms up when we, when we can and, or when we need it, you know. And so I, I, those things are all awesome, and it's very, very thought-provoking and very um, – you know, get your mind really going on the beauty of the gospel and, and the mercy of Yahshua to even have, to bring us down here to show us something. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, yeah. And I just want to say, so anyways, but I've been like thinking a lot about, well, part, a lot of the things I've been thinking about too, I mean, uh, you know, we're always thinking about these things because we're, we're living this gospel and trying to stay diligent and trying not to let the world like suck us dry and overcome us and all the things and you know and Yashua is our strength and I've been thinking a lot about you know we've had a lot of lectures lately about you know the names and and I just you know I just remember coming into class wait you know some however 30 years ago or whatever I don't know how long it's been but it's been quite a while and you know that's one of the first things we learn is the names and and it was like never an issue. It was just like such a nice thing to just like be brought out of the world and to be given that, given that, you know, mm -hmm. and and the meaning of what they mean and 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 like Yahweh, He who causes to exist. I mean, Yahshua is this, you know. Anyway, so I've been thinking a lot about all that because we've been talking about that we've been talking about the importance of the names, we've been talking about, I mean, and I would say this, 
anyone I think that sees anything of this reality or this truth knows that Yahshua was in Dr. Kinley. I mean, mm -hmm. he was Yahshua in a body. I mean, nobody denies that one bit. But I've been reading transcripts. I just started picking up transcripts and just started reading them. Not any particular ones, not any for any specific reason other than trying to be diligent and, you know, trying to put my head in the right place. And I keep running across all these things, you know, that Dr. Kinley was just like, he's always given the credit to Yahweh and Yahshua. And he doesn't want to be puffed up. He doesn't want to be uh, revered. He doesn't want to be glorified. He didn't die for us. He, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's, they're loaded, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so I'm kind of in tune to that a lot because we've been talking about that so much and it's just kind of been like a, kind of a controversial thing as of late. And the reality of it is he'll, he's the first one that says, I didn't, I didn't die for you. Don't be puffing me up. I don't want it. And so then you would have to think. Why Why even do that? I mean, he didn't want that. And everyone knows that Yahshua was in Dr. Kinley. I mean, that because Dr. Kinley said, when I received this revelation, I'm no more, I was no longer me. It's like, he is Yahshua. But the reality of it is, the mystery of iniquity is always trying to, like, take the truth or take the way something is and change it, mm -hmm. you know, because the truth is first and then the lie follows. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think about all these, these scriptures or these transcripts I've been reading. I'm just like, you know, he laid this, you know, in his, in his transcript, you know, the whole purpose of the whole purpose of this, this class is to keep it simple. Um, to make it plain, I'm talking to you plain, you know, you don't need to fix anything, you don't need to change anything, you know, and then I, so I think about that, you know, he like labored for 40 years or whatever on this earth plane, you know, suffering with our carnal minds and our, uh, in, our, our theories, concepts and opinions that were still like not removed from us. And he really painstakingly with long suffering and patience really um, preached the thing the way that it was supposed to be. And he's the one that had the revelation. And so I look at, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, and, and, and anyways, so there's stuff I want to pull out of there if we're not in any hurry. I just, there's some stuff that, uh, there's just, I've been just running across so much stuff and it's because of all the things we've been talking about. And it just, they're hitting me. First of all, just really quick, I was just kind of, um, just ran across this. I was looking at this. All right, this is our textbook, okay? Um, volume one and two. And this has been out forever. And if you just look back in here, and I'm, I'm just going to read just certain things. Just, um, let me see. All right. So basically, for people that are maybe are newer watching or whatever, these textbooks are out there basically to familiarize people with the gospel and, and this teaching. And so Dr. Kinley, Dr. Kinley painstakingly wrote all of these. And he said, there's a, just a section that I wanted to really look at for a minute. And, um, and it said, this is under basic scriptural and scientific preparation. Okay, and I can you can read the whole thing, but I'm not going to. Um, okay, so it says this teaching is spiritually transforming the carnal mind and illuminating the understanding of mankind in regards to his theological and religious concepts of Yahweh Elohim's purpose. So he's transforming our carnal mind. Okay. Uh, there's a, you know, there's a conversion going on here. And, um, and it says, I'm just kind of skipping down because you could, I could read this whole thing like loaded. Um, okay. Okay. And I'm, I'm reading down to this paragraph here. It says, this is like, down here. Our aim here is to lead you step by step 
to an indisputable, profound knowledge of Yahweh our Elohim and a permanent, conscientious realization of his universal ever presence in whom we live and move and have our being, and a realistic and comprehensible understanding of his incorporeal and physical manifestation throughout the universe. Talk about a mouthful. Okay. Before this gigantic task can be universally accomplished, we must realize first the direct course of procedure by which the invisible Yahweh Elohim chose to create the universe and to make himself fully known as he really is and actually exists. So the creator, the creator um, has a procedure set up to, that he chose to show his sons, who he brought out of the world, the predestined people that we were talking about, um, to to make himself fully known as he really is and actually exists. First to Moses as the individual writer, and thereafter to mankind collectively. All right, and it says, Therefore Yahweh Elohim chose to make himself fully known from his inception up to the present time as follows. So right there, it says, Yahweh Elohim chose to make himself fully known. So it's not a mystery. Yahweh laid out a way to fully know him. I mean, as much as we can know, I mean, obviously, what he wants us to know of him. Let's put it that way. And there's a way to know him. So it's not a mystery. It's not so, like, complex that we can't understand it or we wouldn't be able to know him because we're very limited. All right. And it's and, and there's, like, a, there's all these steps. But step one, and I'm not going to read them all because, I mean, they're all important, but they're not what I wanted to say about <coughs> specifically. Well, this first part, it must be understood and remembered that this teaching is not a concept of the writer of this book. In other words, it's not about any of our concepts, theories, or opinions. Mm -hmm. It's But it's supported by Elohim, the archetype original pattern of the universe. All right, and then it says, okay, so I wanted to read, and then it says, without faith, it's impossible to please him, which, okay. All right, <coughs> step three. So there, you could read this all for yourself. Steps are all important because they're laid out here for our admonition. But step three, remember, there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Neither is there salvation in any other name, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah, which refers back to Acts 4, 10 through 12. Now, we've learned that and taught that forever, but he's putting it as a step in knowing the purpose of Yahweh and knowing how Yahweh really exists. So there's no other name under heaven. So no other name under heaven other than Yahshua the Messiah. That's right. So the point being, why would somebody think to change that again? Like it's, it, you, and I think about like how we talk about, you know, we've had a lot of classes about, like, Ju like Bruce was in Judaism and and how they were they were taught just mentally to take the name out of the, you know, the, take the name out of the book and replace it with Adonai. And, and you know, anyway, the point is, it's like, so they've been, they've been trying to make names not important back from the beginning of time. So... Yahweh gave his, his name to mankind, and then mankind decided that it wasn't important or too sacred to speak or whatever, and then substitutes the name for my Lord. And, and then, so way back there, there Yahweh presents the information, what he wants the people to call him, that his name means something, and then they take it away. So come down to now. So then the name basically was taken out for the whole, you know, for up until Dr. Kinley, I mean, people knew Yahweh's name was that, but nobody revered it, nobody used it, nobody thought it was important, they thought that was Old Testament stuff, and the Lord God is good. None of that stuff is what Yahweh ever wanted. So when, so when Dr. Kinley comes in, and basically through this teaching reveals 
the true name of Yahweh again, brings it to the forefront, and reveals, brings to the forefront Yahshua, the Messiah, meaning and the name and the, and and what it means that he um, that Yahweh is salvation and the importance of that and there's no salvation in any other name that's what by revelation Dr. Kinley was given from the Father to present and to uh, to give to us for us to hang on to and for us to preach and teach what was given so it's like it reminds me just of the fact that you can never people can never be happy with what they have they have to always like try to make something different bigger better there's no bigger or better than Yahshua the Messiah and making something contemporary or any of that stuff that's not what the founder taught he never wanted glory. He never got up off of the name Yahshua. And he's the one that, by revelation, from the, the creator of the universe, is who gave us the name and what it means and that we are not saved in any other name and to use that and revere that. So to me, you know, it's right in the beginning of this uh, IDMR 101, really. Okay. So I just, you know, anyways, and then, all right, then step four, we must realize that without a workable knowledge and correct interpretation of what is written in the Law and Prophets, it is impossible, impossible for you to know anything definite about Yahweh, our, our Elohim, and his purpose. So he's saying right here in step four, that you have to have a workable knowledge and correct interpretation of what is written in the law and the prophets, citing Isaiah 8.20, which we've preached since day one in this class also. Mm -hmm. And it says it's impossible for you to know anything definite. So, in other words, that's how this whole thing has been set up. The preaching of the gospel is set up by preaching law, prophets, and fulfillment because it, it's concrete, I mean, concrete proof of Yahweh's existence, Yahweh's purpose, un with unerring accuracy over and over, blood, water, spirit, 40, death, burial, resurrection, over and over and over. It's unerring accuracy. And to, and that's the way Yahweh wants it to be preached. He by revelation, gave it to Dr. Kinley for him to pass on to any sons that are going to be saved down at the end of this age. Right. So, how, I mean, and there's no, how else would you even know Yahweh or how he exists if you don't have any, any witnesses? That's what we talk, we talk about all the time, the witnesses, you know? And so he's saying it's impossible for you to know anything. So, and and any I know that also in there too he's always he says and I know we've quoted it before I haven't read it in mind but the fact that you know if you have a dispute about anything you know how to you know how to resolve it go back to the law and prophets and it resolves itself because it's written in there and it's it's based on principles unerring principles so you know so that anyway so that uh, let's see. So it says, therefore, Yahshua the Messiah told the scribes and Pharisees to search the scriptures, not the, tradi not the tradition of the elders or theories, concepts, and opinions. Um, let's see. For in them you think he had eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. John 5.39 that we've taught forever also. Uh, and then there's every step is really good, but then... Going down to, okay, step number eight. Well, okay, step number seven. We also must we must also realize that the invisible things of Yahweh are seen and understood by the visible things. Okay, which is Romans 1, 19 and 20, of course. And we talk all the time about everything goes right according to uh, the, the pattern, no matter what, <laughs> uh, vehicle you use, so to speak, whether it's um, science, whether it's the creation, whether it's um, 
weather, I mean, everything on there. Well, I mean, we're, if you look at that chart over there, wherefore, seeing we are compassed about by so great a cloud of witness, this, all, everything on that is stuff that can be used to prove that Yahweh is going by a pattern and it's all the same. You know, it's uh, solid, intermediate, and um, what's the other word? Concrete. So, no, concrete, intermediate, and gaseous. Gaseous, okay. Abstract. Abstract, yeah. So, and, so base, and that's, yeah, okay, so it, it, in those three states, they're everything, everything is those three states, which we've talked about water, we talked about all that, but that shows forth that um, Yahweh is pure spirit, Yahweh Elohim is intermediate uh, uh, spiritual body that, that was seen, but it's, it was a spiritual, Elohim is the word, the spiritual embodiment of this, and then the, the concrete state of Yahshua, who, who came in a physical body, and these three states are one existence, just like these three are one, everything, these, everything, these three are one, our body, these, and these three are one, and, and these, I mean, the tabernacle, everything, so that's how he exists, and it's easy, and it's simple, but without using these things, how would you even understand anything about him? Because it's not a mystery. You know, it is a mystery if you have no way of being able to discern the thing. But he said right in here he wanted his sons to know him mm -hmm. and know how he exists. So why he would have to set it up this way for us to know. All right, so and it says so, yeah, so then he, they read Romans 1, 19 and 20, which um, I don't need to read. But basically it says, yeah, uh, that what, what can be known is manifest in them, for Yahweh hath showed it unto them. Invisible things are are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. I'm not going fast, but anyway, so that's you know that's been taught forever, and so the law, prophets, and fulfillment, the creation, um, everything is to show forth how Yahweh exists, and and uh, and. That if we talk, we talk about it all the time too, and all of the and and every and every and there's like charts and tons more stories that we don't even have charts for, and the principles all the way down through is Yahweh's salvation, right? And in every situation, He came in to be their salvation in whatever manifestation you know you're using back here, mm -hmm. you know where any of any of these things and thousands more. So the principle, so we talk all the time about how, you know, and then there's controversy on, you know, is there salvation, you know, what's, well, I'm not even going to go there, but basically, Yash, Yash, Yashua means Yahweh is salvation. If his name means there's salvation, that's what his name means. And he wouldn't give that to us to trick us by, and like, by, oh, you don't have a soul, and there's no salvation. It's like, this is what he, right. his, his whole mission was. This mm -hmm. is the reason for his existence by coming down here. He came down, I mean, he could have stayed up there. Why come down here? Come down here, go through all the things that he went through, and, and go up on the cross and everything for himself. Mm -hmm. It's like, why, you know, it's, it's, that's to no to no avail here. It's like it's taken away everything that he did for us and bring it to naught. Just like bringing his name to naught, really, or to mean to mean nothing, to be worthless, have no meaning, really. So, all right, and then so anyway, step number eight. We must also realize. That all scripture, not traditions, that is given by inspiration of Yahweh is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of Yahweh may be perfect, thoroughly furnished in all good works. 
And that's 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, which we've pulled a million times over the years. So it's, yeah, and, and we talk about all the time how the, that Yahweh said that the, script, the, the scriptures are revelations of Yahweh given to man. And, and that's how he's revealing himself is through the scriptures because he gave those to us for revelation to man, you know? So, um, so it says all scriptures are profitable for doctrine. In other words, we're supposed to use the scriptures because they're profitable for doctrine, for reproof, meaning if you have... How you know if, if there's an error, you prove it out so you realize that where your error lies. If you don't have any gauge um, slide rule, as we used to call it back in the day, there's no way to gauge what's correct or what's incorrect. And so, so it's scripture given by inspiration of Yahweh is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction when you are wrong. It shows you that you're wrong because if there's no line, line upon line, line upon line, if there's not a line showing the same principle all down through the book, it's wrong, okay? And for instruction in righteousness, which that's our purpose here is we're inst instructing in righteousness, you know, righteousness, the truth, the gospel. So, and, and, our, and then it's also, too, there's places in there too where he's talking about the importance of bringing people down to class to, you know that we're at the end of the age and that it's very important to to you know try to get anyone you can down here and all that kind of stuff because this is where you're going to receive it if you're going to receive it mm -hmm. is down here mm -hmm. in these classes the way Yahweh revealed his purpose and plan to Dr. Kinley. And as I remember, we talk about this too, you know, when he says, um, when he, he, when Dr. Kinley received the vision and then he didn't have the, he, he hadn't received the revelation yet and received the vision and Yahweh's like, what are you going to do with this man? And he didn't know until he received the revelation, which enabled him to know, he said, I'm going to teach your people. That's the preaching of the gospel is teaching the people. It's it's dispelling the ignorance of all the various religions and everything that are that are teaching the wrong thing or totally totally out of phase, as we used to say. And so just just reading this, it was like you know, it's like. There's only one truth, and there's one way that was set up, mm -hmm. and and we talk to all the time about how uh, how fine tuned things have have become for us, but it's still based on the 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 per, uh, parameters, I guess, or whatever of how the thing is set up and how it needs to be preached and how it needs to be taught and how you know and and, and I challenge anyone. Go in those go in those transcripts and start reading them. It's like Dr. Kinley taught this just as it's still being taught in these schools now, in some of these schools now, and he says it right in there. Don't fix anything, don't change anything. It's like he's like, I'm the one that had the revelation, not you, basically. And this is how this what I'm giving you is what you need. Don't fix it up. Don't try to get up here and try to do more with it than I did. It's like, don't, you know, you're going to pay for it, basically. And that's a scary thing, you know, because, you know, nobody's saying to never, like, you know, and then, and then he's like, and people think you need to get off of blood, water, and spirit. He's like, how are you going to get off of blood, water, and spirit? He's like, blood, you can't get up off of that, you know. <laughs> you're not getting off of that. And Yahweh is spirit. So you're not getting up off anything. It's like any t any time you want to do that, you know it's wrong because it's not going according to the scriptures, mm -hmm. you know, and how it was set up. And so just that right there, and I have like tons of stuff in, like in the transcripts that 
I've got underlined and I would read, but I don't want to take up a ton of time at this point. But if I get called up again, I might continue on. Did you, do you want to get up there now? No, you've got about five minutes. Go ahead and finish it up. Five minutes? No, you do. Yes. Well, five minutes. I need more than five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a flop. I know. Oh, I only, but all right. Well, I'll finish. I'll just stay up here for a no, minute. there's five minutes left in class. All right. Well, all right. I'm gonna, all right. I'll just say this real quick. There's, and I just happen to, I just happen to um, pick this particular, I just happen to have this, and I don't know where I got it 100 years ago, a collection of three transcripts um, that they put out a really long time ago, old and decrepit, and there's a couple things, and I'll, if I get called up again some other time, I might, I'll work with some of this stuff way more, not work with it, but talk about it, but mm -hmm. um, it's just, it blew my mind when I started reading this, but this is, this one is really important, so I'm just going to kind of fine tune this one real quick. Be why be consistent and regular in attendance in school? Okay, and this was, I think, one of his last transcripts. It's December 1975. Okay, and I think this was right before he took off the flesh, and he said that uh, he was really sick and he didn't sleep, but. He, there was a message that he wanted to convey to us, and that superseded how ill he was or the fact that he really shouldn't be at class because he was sick. But he said it was so important. So he said, there, he goes, uh, he, goes uh, he didn't sleep, and he said the reason why I didn't sleep was because there's a message that's supposed to be conveyed unto you that you might possibly overlook or misunderstand or uh, take it like you do some other things. And he says basically it's vitally important. So uh, I'm just kind of cutting through really quick, but um, he said, I, then I want you to be obedient to the things that I'm going to say to you. Don't just take it lightly. And so one of the first things he says, which we talk about all the time, be, cons be constant and regular in your attendance. Try to learn all that you can learn or try to learn all that you can possibly learn. Try to understand all that you can possibly understand because you need it. You need it to keep you steadfast, strong, and not be removed from the faith the scripture says. Okay? And then, if it's possible for you to come, come here. I want, uh, I want you to hear that. In, I'm sorry. I want you to bear that in mind, and I want you to obey it. If it wasn't important, I wouldn't be standing up here before you now. So he's basically on his deathbed, and he can't sleep the whole night because of things that are he knows that he needs to pass on before he takes off the flesh. One of them, be constant and regular in your attendance because you're going to need it. And that, you know, and then if we think about it, where better should we be anyway? You know, what else is there more important than coming to class? You know, watching TV or whatever. It's like, you know. Um, so then, I'll skip way down here. And then it's and then he's he he tunes in over here to the apostle Paul said, even among your own selves, see, some of them would raise up and speak perverse things to draw away disciples after themselves. And it just kind of appears that uh, any basically any vessel that's not preaching what was taught and set up the way the school is set up is trying to draw away tra draw away disciples after themselves. Um, and it says, see, because everybody, see, because everybody, you have to really open up your eyes if you want to be saved, okay? So there is a saving and there is a being lost, opening up your eyes, which is how do you do that? You have to have knowledge of what's going on here. And it says you don't have no long time to be saved. Uh, okay. All right, I'm going to skip through because I'm almost out of time. Uh, okay, listen carefully. I have told you repeatedly for 44 years that I was the man that Yahweh sent in the world in these last days to teach you the truth. I am the, I'm the man the only man 
and it's like basically bold, meaning that he was sent in here. He's the only one that was sent in here to preach the gospel to us in order for us to be saved. So whatever he gives us, however he preached it and proved it out, I might add, is all we need to be saved, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and then it says, uh, since, you, since you are the only ones that know anything at all in reality about the truth, then it is imposed or incumbent upon you to see to it. You're the very folks that he's talking about in the 24th chapter of Matthew. You're the folks, see, that he talks about to carry this message in all the world. And so that's huge because the message that we're incumbent upon to carry to the world is the message he gave us, not mm -hmm. some skewed bunch of stuff that a person couldn't even possibly understand, really. I'm, I'm just saying. So, uh, all right. Um, and then it says, uh, you've got down to a place where you've got to be diligent in your search in order to learn anything. The Apostle Paul says, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. Talked about that since day one. Mm -hmm. Prove all things. If you're teaching something that you can't prove in the Bible or through the creation or both of those scripturally, scripturally basically, but backing up in the other witnesses, um, if you can't prove if you can't prove what you're teaching, then you shouldn't be teaching it. Right. And and he says in here too, he's like, if I can't prove it, you got no business believing me either. Mm -hmm. So he had the parameters set up for him. The parameter is the parameter. Okay. If the creator of the heaven and earth in a physical body is telling you he's got to prove it or we don't have to believe it, it's got to go now still. It, it's the same thing, you know. Right. All right, so prove all things, hold fast to that, which is good. Now, for me to stand up here and say something to you and then can't prove it, see, that's bad. You follow? Now, you don't have no long time to get straightened out. Some of us have been in this school for a long time, haven't gotten straightened out yet. So don't, so don't you feel too bad about it. Apostle Paul says you should pay the most earnest heed to the things that you hear. And then it, you go on down and said, lest any time you let them slip. Now, some of the things that have been told you about this work, you let them slip. Therefore, it's necessary for you to come back to school. Catch it up, see? And there's like a bunch more, and I know I'm out of time, but just, I guess my point is, uh, all right, let me read this last part. Um, this, all right. We need to pay strict attention to the things we hear. And I'm skipping through a little bit, so I'm not reading the whole paragraph. Now, somebody will come along after coming to this school seat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to call your attention to it. After hearing these charts explained, primarily raised in the school, been around here a long time, a long time and come up out of the clear blue sky and say things against that which you have been taught. Now see, if you hadn't learned your lesson, you'd be carried away with it. Well, I'm going to tell you this. You're not going to get away with it. You're not going to get away with it. Big, bold letters. So, and then he's talking, you can't get up off a of blood, water, spirit. Um, anyways, so the bottom line is... Uh, Okay, last thing. Now, people will say things like that. Um, people will say things like that for self gratification or to try to teach you deep, try to teach you deep, carry you on down into the depths of things. That's what they call themselves doing, not realizing that what you're doing, you're making a mess out of it. Now, the thing to do in this school is this see? to make things as simple as possible, you see? So it's not about deep, esoteric, make-no-sense trains of thought. It's about keeping it simple and preaching the gospel the way it was given to us. Mm -hmm. So it's right. just, yeah, it, just, it really stirred me up reading that stuff. I was just like, gosh, you know? It's just like, it's just so apropos with times. 
So with those words, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise, Yahshua, the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power before all time, now and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Leonard, do you want the last one? No, is this the one that we talked about? Yeah. Okay, so am I have spells on there? Cool. Alright, and Andrea, here's your. This I think I was going to give you kind of like old and stand up, but. Cool. You should try to come over sometime. Uh, Probably, uh, maybe after I get back or something. Oh no 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 no! Uh, with your oh, yeah, with your hard drive. Yeah, I'm in a hurry. Oh, okay. I know you're really swamped, and I'm running out of time. But.